The Tile Roofing Industry Alliance presents changes to the 6th edition high wind tile installation manual issued in 2020. Here we'll work through some examples using the manual. Let's take this first example in Naples, Florida. You can see in the picture it's a gable roof. Looking at the Google map, it's surrounded by some homes, but not in a densely built area, so it's not exposure category B, and it's not by an ocean, so it's not exposure category D. So that means it's exposure category C. When we enter the location into ASCE's hazard tool and select risk category 2 for typical residential, we get a wind speed of 166 miles per hour. Let's take a closer look on the map. To determine the building width and length, you draw a rectangle around the entire perimeter of the building. For this calculation exercise, we'll just assume a building length of 80 feet and a building width of 55 feet. Now let's put together all the information that we need for the building, roof, and tile to make the wind uplift calculations. We need the design wind speed. We have the building width and length. Exposure category C. The roof style is, appears to be gable. And let's assume this roof slope is over 612. And let's guess the peak and eave heights of 25 and 33 feet. Adding those together and dividing by two gives us a value of 29 feet for the mean roof height. And since it looks like a high profile tile, we'll use Borel's Barcelona 900 tile, which has a tile ratio of 1.084 from its product approval. And let's assume it's installed direct deck with no battens. When using the fifth edition manual to the previous standard of ASCE 710, we would use table 2B for roof pitches greater than 612, because we said it was going to be steeper than 612. And it doesn't matter whether it's a hip or gable roof. We look at exposure C, that section of the table, and we had a mean roof height of 29 feet. We always round up to the next figure, the next uh, nearest number on the table, so that would be 30 feet. And we do the same with the wind speed of 166 miles per hour and round up to 170 on the table. Then we look at the table and we find an overturning moment value of 22.9 foot-pounds force. Now if we use the 6th edition manual to the new standard ASCE 716 and to the new code, we would use table 2GC. G for gable and C for exposure C. The roof pitch again is greater than 612. And again, we would use a mean roof height on the table of 30 feet and wind speed on the table of 170 miles per hour. This gives us two values for overturning moment for the LPZ or low pressure zone value of 31.2 and for the high pressure zone, a value of 43.7. Now, remember, we need to adjust these values by the tile ratio, which is 1.084 for Borel's Barcelona 900 that I found in their product approval. In the fifth edition, while it wasn't necessary to adjust for tile ratio, we will for this exercise for a comparison. So that value is multiplied by 1.084 to become 24.8. And with the sixth edition, we multiply each of those values by 1.084 and get values of 33.8 and 47.4 foot-pounds force. Now we look at table three, the mechanical fastening resistance values to find a fastening method that will meet or exceed the design requirement. We look at the direct deck and high profile numbers. In the fifth edition, we had a value of 24.8. So looking at those numbers, we have, we can use a num one number eight screw per tile, which has a value of 28.7. With the sixth edition, we have a higher value of 33.8. So the value for one screw at 28.7 wouldn't be enough. So we could select another fastening method. Uh, and I'll, cho I'll choose to use two screws per tile, which has a value of 51.3. The high pressure zone has a design requirement of 47.4. 
So fortunately, I can still use two screws per tile in that zone. So I can use one fastening method across the whole roof. In the fifth edition requirements, I only needed one screw per tile, but with the new sixth edition, I'll need to use two screws per tile. So now let's look at example two, which is the same building, but instead of it being a gable roof, let's assume it's a hip roof. Using the fifth edition manual, we would still have the same value. Because it didn't matter whether it was gable or hip design or style, they had the same values. So we still have an overturning moment value adjusted to 24.8 foot-pounds force after adjusting for the tile ratio. Now, if we look at the sixth edition, now we need to use table 2 HC instead of table 2 GC because it's a hip roof instead of a gable roof. And we would use uh, or find the area of the table for 6 and 12 to 12, 12 because it's a steep pitched roof. And again, we would look at the mean roof height of 30 feet and wind speed of 170 miles an hour to find overturning moments of 39.5 foot pounds force for the low pressure zone and 47.9 for the high pressure zone. When we adjust for tile ratio and multiply those values by 1.084, for the fifth edition, we still have the same value of 24.8. And now with the sixth edition, for a hip roof, the values increase to 42.8 and 51.9. Now looking at table three for the mechanical fastening resistance values for direct deck and for high profile, for the fifth edition, we have the value of 24.8 still as one screw per tile would satisfy all the tiles on the roof, just as we did for the gable roof because it didn't matter whether it was gable or hip when we used the fifth edition. With the sixth edition, now with the low pressure zone value of 42.8, again we can still use two screws per tile with a value of 51.3, but now with a high pressure zone value of 51.9, that exceeds the two screws resistance value of 51.3, therefore maybe we would need to use an adhesive that has a product approval value that meets or exceeds the 51.9. If we use the two fastener method, we need to calculate the size of the high pressure zones that are highlighted in green and are measured by dimension A. As we discussed before, dimension A is 10% of the least horizontal dimension or the building width or 0.4 times the mean roof height, whichever is smaller. So let's calculate 0.1 or 10% times the building width of 55 feet gives us five and a half feet. 0.4 times the mean roof height of 29 feet equals 11.6 feet. The smaller of those values is five and a half feet. But it cannot be less than 4% of the least horizontal dimension, which is the building width, or three feet. 0.04 or 4% of the building width of 55 feet is equal to 2.2 feet. 5.5 feet that we calculated earlier is not less than this value and it's not less than three feet. So our dimension A is 5.5 feet. So we measure in from the edges of the roof five and a half feet to determine the high pressure zone where we would use that different fastening method. And this can be marked on the roof prior to installation of the tiles. Now let's take a look at a third example where it's the same roof, but what if it's a mixed where there's some portions that are hip and some that are gable? How would we deal with that? Well, let's look at an example. So here you see a couple of roof styles that are predominantly hip style roofs, but there are some portions that are gable. The one on the left has a dormer, so it has a gable style roof on that, and the one on the right has an entryway and it's got a gable style roof over the entrance. So if we look at the diagrams of the difference between a gable style and a hip style roof showing the zones, 
that will give us a guide. Now, first what we do is for the low pressure zones, what we would do is we'd compare the values of the hip and the gable tables and use whichever is higher for that specific roof design, for that type of building and that location with its wind speed and so forth. Then for the high pressure zones, we would use the table for whether it's a hip or gable table, depending on what that style of corner is. We'll use the values we determined from examples one and two for the hip and the gable designs. We start with the high pressure zones using the hip table for the hip corners marked in blue, and we found a value of 51.9, which exceeds all of the mechanically fastened uplift resistance values in table three. So we determined that we'd need to use foam or a foam adhesive that has a product approval value that meets or exceeds that 51.9 value. The gable corners in green, we found a value of 47.4 and could use two screws per tile. For the low pressure zones, we compare the two values between the hip and the gable tables and use the higher value of 42.8 from the hip table and found we could use two screws exceeds that value of 42.8. Therefore, we can use two screws on the entire roof except for the foam. Uh, we'll need to use foam for the hip corners in blue. And to do that, if we use a two fastening method, we'll need to calculate the size of that high pressure zone as we determined in the previous example. If you have any questions, please contact the TRI at tileroofing.org or you can contact any one of the tile manufacturers by doing a web search for their name and finding their contact information. Thank you very much.